Welcome to Sound and Fury. I am Eric Wilfred Watson. And I may, or may not, be Hugh Frank. Today we're going to talk about a storytelling tool known as the MacGuffin. Yes, which prior to McDonald's uh, patenting it, used to be just called the Guffin. How would you define a MacGuffin? You know, I tried to find the definition and just couldn't. You searched far and wide. For... I did. I looked everywhere for the definition of MacGuffin, just couldn't find it. <laughs> well, a MacGuffin is essentially a doodad, thingamajig, some sort of noun that the story people are involved in going after, pursuing... It's the thingy that gets the story moving forward, and oftentimes the thingy really isn't that important, but the quest for the thingy is. Gotcha. Okay. Like a grail? To seek the Holy Grail. <laughs> yes, the Holy Grail is a perfect example of a MacGuffin. Sweet. Now, the term MacGuffin was really popularized by none other than one of my favorite Hollywood people, Alfred Hitchcock. Good evening. I hope you'll excuse me if I appear a trifle excited, but I've just come into possession of a cure for insomnia. It comes in capsule form. For best results, they must be taken internally. Ah, in the movie The 39 Steps, which came out in 1935, he uh, popularized the term MacGuffin relating to that movie. In that movie, they're searching for some spy thingy, some government secret thing, but that's not really what the movie was about. The movie was about a guy who was wrongfully accused, and he's trying not to get killed and clear his name. But to do that, he has to find the secret plans, which I think are like a super secret airplane engine or something. Plans of the Death Star? Yes, that's exactly what they are. Okay. And uh, Alfred Hitchcock described MacGuffin as... Uh, he was giving a lecture to... Um, he was talking to people at Columbia University in 1939. Ah, okay. And Alfred Hitchcock, referring to a MacGuffin, said, It might be a Scottish name taken from a... Oh, excuse me. Alfred Hitchcock voice. It might be a Scottish name. No, I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> taken from a story about two men on a train. One man says, What's the package up there on the luggage rack? Or the baggage rack? The other man answers, Oh, that's a MacGuffin. The first one asks, Well, what's a MacGuffin? Well, the other man says, it's an apparatus for trapping lions in the Scottish Highlands. Yeah. Oh. Well. <laughs> are there a lot of lions in the Scottish Highlands? That's basically what the guy replied. With. Okay. And then, the, well, that's no MacGuffin then. <laughs> with the idea being, well, then the MacGuffin is actually nothing at all. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. All right. And Alfred Hitchcock also said that it's the thing that the spies are after, but the audience doesn't care. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're more interested in what, what happens mm -hmm. in the, the whole... Okay. It's a device to move the story forward, but not necessarily the most important part of the story itself. Gotcha. Although it could be. Yes, and George Lucas kind of disagreed with Hitchcock. He said that the audience should care about the MacGuffin as much as the characters do. Which you can kind of tell in Raiders of the Lost Ark. He really wants you to care about that thing. He explains why it's important. All right. And uh, it makes a movie where it would have got found whether... It belongs in a museum. Yeah. <laughs> But I got found whether Indiana Jones existed or not. Yes. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway. MacGuffins kind of have a bad name. Um, there's sort of, like, there's a negative connotation to them, but... You give MacGuffins a bad name. We must have a talk about the MacGuffin. So can you think of a good example of a MacGuffin? Can I think of a good of a good... Well, okay, besides the Death Star plans... Besides the Egg MacGuffin with cheese. The Egg MacGuffin with cheese, yeah. Uh, besides the Death Star plans. Um, I think the... Coming into my mind, the perfect Egg MacGuffin for me is the briefcase in the movie... Um, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. It's on uh, my list of MacGuffins. There you go. Because you, you never really know what it is. Um, you get kind of hints. Now... Similarly, in, in a lot less popular movie, uh, Ronin, if you've seen that. 
don't think so. Um, it's about a, a bunch of ex CIA and ex uh, KGB and basically, you know people that uh, used to be in various government agencies during the Cold War. Uh, band together, they get hired by somebody to get this case, and they never really find out what's in the case. Uh, spoiler alert: they don't find out what's in the case, uh, but it's just a case, and the, the whole they spend the whole movie chasing the, this case, and it's all about what's in the case and spending money to get it and trying to get it back from buyers who want to buy it, and you never find out. So yeah, that. So I have a list of MacGuffins. Okay. Tell me what you think of each of these MacGuffins, okay. if you know what they are. All right. You might not have seen all of these. Um, oh, before I do that, Star Trek MacGuffins. <laughs> of course, Star Trek MacGuffins. The whales in Star Trek IV. Oh, those would be a MacGuffin. Admiral, there be whales here. They're really, they're the thing that they're after, but that's not really what it's about. They're trying to stop Earth from getting destroyed by a weird alien probe thing, but they do it by searching for eight for whales. Yes, that's true. They had a whale all the time. <laughs> There's the bioweapon thingy in Star Trek Beyond. No, no! Oh, yeah, I guess so. There is. Littering and, littering and, littering the, and. The. Thingy that takes them to Exegol in Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker. Well, <laughs> yeah, there's that. Well, the Death Star plans. Yeah, well, the Death Star that's plans. A good, that's a yeah, good. Yeah, that's a good MacGuffin. Was R two D two the MacGuffin, or was it the plans within R two D two that would be MacGuffinized? Well, it's kind of both. It's kind of both. It's like um, going back to you know, was it Marcellus Wallace's soul? And if so, you know, the briefcase is what they were after, but what was in the briefcase is more important. So in this case, you know, R2-D2 is the briefcase, and the plans are Marcellus Wallace's soul. The Genesis device? Ah, yes. Yeah. They MacGuffin the shit out of that. They do. <laughs> That's a phrase you don't hear every day. I MacGuffin the shit out of that. Now speak for yourself. <laughs> The Da Vinci Code in The Da Vinci Code. Ah, The Da Vinci Code is a MacGuffin. Yeah. Indiana Jones 1 and 3, the Ark and the Holy Grail. Right. And, of course, the Holy Grail in Monty Python, the Holy Grail. Yeah. Um, are the... I've already got one. I've already got one. Are the children a MacGuffin in the second one? Not really. Mm. They're not really searching he kinda, for them. He kind of frees them as a side effect of just getting out of the Temple of Doom, so, yeah. The Maltese Falcon in The Maltese Falcon. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh... I have the briefcase in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. I already talked about that. Yeah. The Marvin Acme Will in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, yeah. I saw it once, and uh, it was good. Pee-wee's Bicycle? Pee-wee's Bicycle, I guess, is a MacGuffin. <laughs> Exhibit A, a photograph of the victims, my bike and me. <laughs> Exhibit B, another photograph. What's missing from this picture? It's just me, without my bike. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's in the basement of the Alamo. Spoilers. Oh yeah. I've the forty thousand dollars in Psycho. The money that she steals. Huh. Although that might be closer to a red herring. That is closer to a red herring, I think. Because yeah, it just gets tossed anyway. Yeah, it's like it is a MacGuffin in like the first half of the movie, and then it turns into a red herring at the rest of the movie because it doesn't matter at that point. Well, is there anybody kind of actually cool. looking for it though, or does she just have it? Well, yeah, the, she well she steals it, and they're after, there's going to be people after her. They kind of lead you to believe that the plot of the movie is them looking for her when she stole the money. Your girlfriend stole forty thousand dollars. What are you talking about? What is this? She was supposed to bank it on Friday for her boss, and she didn't. And no one has seen her since. Someone has seen her. Someone always sees a girl with $40,000. Yeah, so it's, like it's, it's, it's kind of a weird thing where it's It's a quasi-guffin. Yeah, it's Semi-guffin. It's a MacGuffin and a red herring at the same time. Not many examples where they're both. It's a red McHerring. Yes, with cheese. <laughs> Royale with cheese! The Ring in Lord of the Rings? Oh, yeah. That's that would definitely be a MacGuffin. It takes oh, process. for three really, really long movies. Yes. Even the trees walked in that movie. One ring to rule them all. The rug in the Big Lebowski? 
<laughs> it really puts your room together, dude. Yeah, no, I get that. Sometimes a MacGuffin can be a person. Private Ryan and Saving Private Ryan. That's true. They're spending the movie. They're on a quest to find that guy. Our quest is to hold the grail. We're seeking to hold the grail. The car and dude, where's my car? <laughs> dude, where's my MacGuffin? <laughs> yeah. In books, there's the sort of truth in Terry Goodguy's Wizard's First Rule, which is the mm. so, uh, sort of truth series. Okay. So, okay. It's a magical MacGuffin. Magical MacGuffin. Uh, the Dark Tower in the Dark Tower books. Oh. Where you spend seven or eight, depending upon how you count them, books to get to the Dark Tower. Okay. That's a MacGuffin. Could, Location could, could be a MacGuffin. Terry Brooks has a shitload of MacGuffins in his books. Mm. Most of his books are named after the said MacGuffin. Okay. He has the the Sword of Shannara, the Elfstones of Shannara, the Wish Song of Shannara. Okay. The Black Elfstone. The High Druid's Blade. Okay. Sounds like a MacGuffin to me. Yeah. The Talismans of Shannara. Okay. The Shannara's of Shannara 2, The Search for More Money. (laughs) (laughs) Merchandising! Well, even the the Schwartz ring would be a MacGuffin. Yes, it would. Yeah. Luke Skywalker's lightsaber in the sequels. Uh, He doesn't really... Oh, uh, in the sequel movies? No, because they always have it. Luke Skywalker's kind of a MacGuffin. Mm-hmm. In the Force Awakens, well, the map, the missing map piece. The missing map the piece is the MacGuffin. Yeah, and then there's a whole, there's like several MacGuffins when you get to the the third one of the sequel trilogy, which <laughs> which are his oh, favorite movies. By the way, a judge officially ruled that the Star Wars <laughs> sequel trilogy is schlocky and mediocre. It is officially United States law. You cannot disagree. Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, Star Wars put the article up on the screen, seven, eight, and nine that. are officially, according to law, schlocky and mediocre. Appeals, I think. Yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> judgment for the plaintiff. Yeah. You pick the microphone up just to drop it. <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah, uh, so it's full of MacGuffins. But yeah, there's no, like I, I think the MacGuffin is an underrated or unnecessarily negative sounding. When you say MacGuffin, it sort of has. Like, you're downgrading the movie. Like, oh, they just use a MacGuffin. And I don't think that that's fair, because a lot of fantastic pieces of fiction oh, use that as a device. A lot of the ones that we named, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's just, it's a generic, it's like saying something's cliche. Well, okay, so something's cliche because it, because it works. Because it worked a whole shitload of times. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, so there's nothing really wrong. It, and I've, I've said, I think, in, in several different episodes of our show, you know, talking about the classic, the, the, the hero's journey, right? I mean, the hero's journey is kind of cliche. It's it's the but it it's the same story over and over again, but it but it works. And when you when you apply it, it generally your movie's gonna your story's gonna move along a little bit better, um, following certain things. So having a MacGuffin is, you know, just one of the things you can you can have. But yeah, you're right. It does kind of have a negative. I think the Mick part of it because it sounds like something. Anything you put Mick on the front. You know, we talk about McMansions or whatever. Is just a way of downplaying very expensive houses that look like all the other expensive houses on the block, mm-hmm. right? It's McMansion. Yeah. Uh, so McGuffin makes it sound like it just oh, we'll just put it in the well, box. Well, the shut term it off. way predates McDonald's, where that it does, where that Mick everything came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, but it, but yeah, but that's where it, maybe that, but that's where it got cheapened. Mm-hmm. Is just it happened to sound like that. Please subscribe to our video and. I know of one other MacGuffin example. Okay. Well, he's got to go search for it. The search for more money. Did you see the MacGuffin? <laughs> Did I see the MacGuffin? Yeah, where'd the MacGuffin go? Uh, I didn't s- It's over here somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Where did you put the MacGuffin? Dude, where's my MacGuffin? <coughs> There's a MacGuffin in this book, which you can buy now on Amazon.com. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> the MacGuffin's even on the cover.
seek the Holy Grail. I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you.